Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you to all the parents and caregivers who are joining us this evening for Macaulay Honors College Class of 2027's Parents Night. My name is Stephanie Hyacin, and I'm the Interim VP for External Relations here at Macaulay. Thank you for entrusting us with your young adults and providing them with the exceptional education plus pre-professional and change-making experiences that happen here at one of our eight campuses. We brought together tonight a group of college leaders, our dean, as well as perspectives from our alums and current students and parent constituents. You'll also hear from them and have time for Q&A later and a poll. I'll kind of be the official MC and timekeeper. And before I introduce our dean, we want to share with you a short video. It's going to highlight our new uh, student orientation, a community and team building event that your students participated in last month. And then our exciting bio blitz, a 24 hour science event that your students will participate in next year. Stay tuned. on experiential learning and that means that we really want students to see the city as their classroom. So a BioBlitz is a time and or space limited species diversity survey of a park, of a city, and the students work in shifts of about three hours each. Um, and they are paired with scientific leaders who um, are experts in a wide variety of uh, the flora and the fauna and the fungus that we find around New York City. We use the BioBlitz with our Science Forward course. Part of the point of Science Forward is to have students learn how to do science, learn how science works by having them engage with the scientific process. And so what we're doing at the BioBlitz is a massive data collection event where students are out, they're collecting meaningful ecological data from New York City, and then they get to use that as part of a research project that they do while they're in Science Forward. Thank you so much. So I'm going to introduce our Dean. Dean Dara Byrne is the fourth Dean of Macaulay Honors College. Before that, she served as the Associate Provost for Undergraduate Retention and was Dean of Undergraduate Studies at John Jay. She led 15 departments and oversaw the academic success of 13,000 students. Prior to that, she was tapped to launch Macaulay with a new cohort at John Jay. She brings to us 20 plus years of experience as a professor, a researcher, and an administrator at CUNY. She holds a PhD in rhetoric and intercultural communication from Howard and joined John Jay as an assistant professor in the Department of Speech, Theater, and Media Studies. It is really with a great honor that I welcome Dean Byrne. Thank you for that, Stephanie. Hello, parents. Welcome to Parents Night. It's such a pleasure to be here to bring you greetings. I, I must confess that my message is going to be incredibly short because we have a, a wonderful panel for you that are experts on an array of topics that you're going to be really interested in hearing. Um, I have found over the years that it's best to get out of the way and let the students in particular speak. So I'm really excited that you're going to hear from our Scholars Council President, uh, President Prashad. I'm also excited that you're going to hear from our staff who work tirelessly to support your students. And of course, you're going to hear from one of our parents who can tell you a little bit more about what the experience is like. 
One of the reasons that we do it this way is because we know firsthand that student success is a collaborative effort. It takes an entire village in order to not only help your children graduate, but to also um, build a warm, inviting in, um, college environment where every student has the opportunity to feel like they belong, that they are welcome, and that they are truly cherished in their environment. Now, that's a very different picture of what college -like life is sometimes like for students. But because we are the only public honors college in New York, we get the opportunity to really think about what it is we want college life to be like. Because we truly believe that if this is the environment that your children learn about collaboration, about supporting each other, about um, cooperation and so on, that these are the kinds of things that will be their legacy that they will take with them onto their next steps. And so as you listen tonight, you're going to hear a lot of advice about supporting mental health and wellness, the kind of holistic care at Macaulay, the array of opportunities. Um, as you know, we spend considerable effort uh, fundraising to support your children with study abroad and paid internships because we know that these things are incredibly valuable for their academic and personal journey, but they're sometimes really expensive. And so our commitment to you is in partnering to put all of the items in the toolkit that's going to make a difference. Now, all of this is not perfect. It really does take a village to make it possible. And so one of the things that we do need from all of you as you're supporting your children is um, a sense of collaboration and open communication. Please know know that the academic advisors is probably the single most important thing in the Macaulay journey because the advisors, as one student said to me last year, it's like having a best friend, but who knows better? And I am looking forward for, to you learning from Ben Ross and also connecting with Giannina, Christina, and Brianne, who are going to talk to you about other aspects of student life. So again, I'm going to get out the way to let the real experts talk to you about all of the things that goes into making a very successful, uh, well-rounded life at Macaulay and the role that you play in supporting your children and your family members on their next steps. Again, welcome and thank you for being here. Back to you, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Dean Byrne. Um, now it gives me great pleasure to begin the panel discussion on the Macaulay experience, and I'm happy to bring up Shania Prasad, class of 2025, Macaulay at Baruch. Shania? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Shania Prasad. I'm a junior at Baruch College. I'm majoring in operations management and consulting. So my current goals for my future is to be a healthcare consultant or a hospital manager. And I've been like, I'm still like deciding what I want to do for my career, but Macaulay has been really instrumental in helping me figure out what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to touch more about this later, but I'm really happy to be here to share about my student experience so far. I was actually just telling my family how happy I am with my decision to be at Macaulay, just for like the resources I was able to have, the community I found, and the opportunities presented to me. So um, first, I just want to like kind of share about like the central things that Macaulay has brought to my experience, such as the internships. I've taken I've taken part in three internships so far, and I'm so since freshman year I, I had two internships, and then my sophomore year, which was last summer, I had another internship, and um, I think. I think it's Macaulay has really encouraging students to take part in the real world and get that experience. And they're always trying to partner us with like um, employers and internships. And I really appreciate that because I was able to gain and learn more about myself and also gain that real world experience, which is super valuable. And another asset to being a Macaulay student is the advisors and the connection I get to make with them. Um, that's like actually like one of the biggest benefits because 
I get that guidance and support I need as I'm going through my college journey and that relationship I was able to form. So I'm a first generation student and going through the college process, it's always like difficult. So I really formed a relationship with my advisor who's helped guide me like through my majors and like my decisions. And like I switched a major twice, no, three times. Um, so my advisor has really been there for me. So I really appreciate that. Um, Another part about my Macaulay experience is the Opportunities Fund. That is the students are all received $1,500, um, which is the current baseline. And they're able to, you know, do an unpaid internship or do research or study abroad. So basically explore all their interests. And I'm actually currently in the process of applying for my Opportunities Fund to study abroad this winter. And I'm able to like learn about a different country and gain new skills, which I'm really excited about. And another central part of a Macaulay and probably the biggest impact it has on me is the extracurriculars. So currently I'm on the Scholars Council and I've been on the Macaulay Scholars Council since freshman year. And the Scholars Council is the student governing body at Macaulay. And since freshman year, I was able to gain that community already and with all these Macaulay students from all different campuses. And it was just it was it was like amazing. And now I'm the president of the council. So not only am I continuing gaining a community and getting involved in Macaulay, but I'm also gaining transferable skills for my future. So um, my biggest advice out there for students and parents is to get involved as much as possible with Macaulay, whether it's through clubs or any activities, because you can really gain a lot of skills that can benefit you in your future. So definitely get involved. Um, and I Another aspect of my, I mean, I don't know how long I've been talking for, but um, I would just like want to say that another aspect of it is that it, balancing your like mental health is just really important. Um, and Macaulay has to have so many resources in helping you like for the wellness center. And they're going to speak more about that. And I think it's definitely a, a resource to utilize during your time here. Um, so if you guys have any questions about the student experience, feel free to like let me know and, and ask questions. But um, thank you so much. Thank you, Shania, so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Benjamin Ross. He is a Macaulay Academic Advisor at Queens College. Ben? <clears throat> thank you so much. And thank you, uh, parents, family members of our awesome students who decided to join us tonight. Um, yeah, so as a lot of my uh, colleagues and Shania has said, um, advisors are the front line to uh, Macaulay students, we are based at the campuses, which means that we are where the students are. Hunter Advisor works at Hunter, a Queens Advisor works at Queens and so on. That's where I am right now, Queens College. Um, we have the unique opportunity to see students with dramatically lower caseloads of advisors per student. That means we quite literally get to know each and every one of our students and um, really are able to guide them through the entirety of the four-year academic process. So what is that process like? Well, um, if your student is in their first year, then they're taking the first of four required seminars. In this case, it would be the Arts in New York City. Um, at the end of this year, they're going to take the Peopling of New York City Next year, they're going to take um, science and technology or science forward. And that um, that is where uh, that video that you just saw of the bio blitz comes from, the activities of that class. And then at the end of their sophomore year, they take the future of New York City. All of these count towards their general education requirements. And um, they are the specific curriculum that Macaulay is uh, uniquely known for um, that gives students this very uh, grounded um, education, but um, opens their eyes to lots of things across all of the disciplines. Um, as they go on, as some of the other folks that you have heard from have mentioned, they get to do experiential education, internships, research, um, study abroad. We highly encourage our students to study abroad or study away they can. And as you heard, we can fund them with the Opportunities Fund. Um, your advisor, your student's advisor, your kid's advisor is uh, actually instrumental in them applying to the Opportunities Fund. 
uh, right now, this week, as we speak, I'm working on students with their applications and talking about their potential studies abroad to Korea and Japan and Great Britain and just all over the world. It's always a very exciting time. Um, so we work with students through their academic journey um, twice a year. We advisors, our campus directors who are also based here at the campus and um, the people who work with students directly at the central branch of Macaulay get together for a long and candid conversation about the progress of each and every student. And um, we do make sure they're on track with their credits, but we also make sure that they have the ability to thrive, that they can see pre-professional advising, like pre-health advising for those uh, interested in medicine, just for instance, um, that they're getting exposed to um, the possibility of prestigious scholarships, that they're getting exposed to possible graduate school options. And um, we just track the progress of each and every student. Um, so with all of that in mind, I would say, um, just remember what an exciting time this is in your kid's life and um, that they are at the beginning of a process that they even really don't know, and we really don't even know um, where that's going to take them. Uh, students never fail to surprise me, never fail to impress me. And, uh, you know, I just feel like I'm one of the luckiest people with one of the best jobs in the world, maybe the best job in the world, where I get to just uh, bear witness and help out as um, these students just grow into who they are. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about advising at Macaulay, and I will turn it back to Stephanie. Ben, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, next up is Giannina Christman, and she is our Director of Career Development. Hello, Gia. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Giannina Christman. I serve as the Director of Career Development here at the Central Campus. Um, so basically, my job is to make sure that I'm overseeing all our career programming and services to ensure that your students, uh, your children, are connected to the right professionals and the right companies that they're interested in. Um, and we do that by holding a lot of different types of programming. Um, that includes our career fairs. Um, we offer one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings and appointments for our students, and that's a full hour versus the 30 minutes that they would get on campus. Um, and our alumni mentoring program, as well as our Macaulay Research Assistantship programs, opportunities to go and do office tours, um, information sessions, we really run the gamut. Um, if I can, I'll uh, share a quick uh, video that one of our students uh, just did, one of our content creators did for our TikTok visit, because um, I thought it was very cool and very exciting. Um, but just to talk a little bit more about the types of internships that we offer um, students. Um, like I mentioned, we have a Macaulay Research Assistantship Program that connects um, students with CUNY faculty that are doing research on campus. Um, we also did uh, summer internship programs with Hospital for Special Surgery, Legal Aid Society, and the 9-11 Museum. Um, that's just a snippet. We have a lot, a lot of offerings um, on our job portal, Handshake, um, where students can kind of browse through um, over a thousand uh, different positions that are posted with us. Um, do I have ability to share screen really quickly? I do. Okay, perfect. Hey guys, it's Chantel here and I'm at the TikTok headquarters in Midtown Manhattan and we are going to be having a little tour of the office and a panel with CUNY graduates, so stay tuned. So here's where we saw the guest speakers. It was a really nice office space and it was so colorful, just like TikTok. They had some really nice pillows with the TikTok logo. I did want one for myself, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and here we had the first guest speaker. His name was Karan and he was a graduate from Macaulay in 2018. And he kind of just told us the basics about TikTok and what to do for your application if you wanna apply. So this was the bathroom area. They have a different color on every floor, which I thought was really cool. And in the bathroom, they have products available to their team. Something I thought that was really cool was that they had mouthwash. Like it was the most random thing, but I was like, what? Here we had two other guest speakers speak about their time at TikTok and what it means to them to work there. They had a really, really nice view. It's on the 58th floor that we were and I thought it was just super nice. 
here's the cafeteria which i think is by far the coolest part they literally have everything look at all the drinks and here you're gonna see me just like literally going through the snacks i didn't even know what to choose like i was picking stuff up putting stuff down like it was just it was a crazy experience they also had like different kinds of coffee which i thought was really cool and they also had like not only snacks but also like meals like they had noodles which i thought was really nice okay guys so we're here with alexa and mia and how did you guys enjoy the tour it was so informative and very excited for the future. How'd you guys like it? We love it. It's Great. Awesome. Overall, it was an amazing time and I'm so grateful to McCully for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. So as you saw from that video and from Shania's own testimony, um, we are big believers in connecting our students to experiential learning opportunities, whether that's through internships, fellowships, um, any kind of opportunity that you can imagine, we really do assist our students with that. Um, they do have their campus uh, career center. We see ourselves as a supplement to that. Um, we have a bigger ability to um, connect with our students because we don't. We only have about 2,000 100 in our roster. Um, I am happy to answer any questions, postgraduate outcomes, et cetera, um, that anyone has uh, later on in the session. But I just wanted to share quickly the kind of stuff that we're doing here. Uh, as Ben said, I think I also have the coolest job because I get to go on these types of tours. I'm always in awe every time we go. And I'm so excited um, when our students get excited about opportunities, because as you can imagine, they really go off to do some amazing things in the future. The alum that gave us access to TikTok um, also has brought us on office tours at every place that he has worked at. Um, so that includes Viacom, um, where we visited a couple of years ago. Um, so we are always open to suggestions and where our students are interested in visiting. Um, so please let us know if you have a really cool office space or if you have a company that you'd like for us to have our students visit, please feel free to contact me. Um, we're also open if you have any job openings or internship openings at your company, please make sure that you contact me. Um, we'd be happy to send some really wonderfully talented um, Macaulay students your way. Thank you. And I'll hand it over to Stephanie again. Yeah, thanks so much. I think I wanna go over to TikTok as well. Check that out. Um, next up is with my colleague, uh, Christina gowan Laura, and she is our Associate Director of Wellness and Counseling at Macaulay. Hi, thank you, Stephanie, and hello to everyone. Um, as you can see, I am in the office. This is uh, one of the rooms of our Wellness Center here at Macaulay, and I am the Associate Director for Wellness and Counseling. I'm going on my fifth year here at Macaulay, so I affectionately called it my super senior year in a meeting earlier today. Um, and I will compete with my colleagues for the best job a little bit later on. But before we get there, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the services that we offer at Macaulay's Mental Health and Wellness Center, the Wellness Center uh, for short, if you'll hear me refer to it as such. Um, so a top priority for us is to make sure that our students are informed about the mental health services that we have here um, to keep them well and to keep them uh, you know, thriving and healthy in all senses of the word. And so um, we do offer a variety of services here at Macaulay. The first thing to know is that all of our services are free. There is no um, cost associated with any of the services we provide here at the Wellness Center. Um, so we don't collect insurance information. It's nothing connected to any um, you know, student service fees or anything like that. Um, additionally, all of our services are confidential. So the same um, HIPAA compliant protections that you would be getting from a medical doctor or another behavioral health specialist, you know, external to a college setting, um, we abide by those uh, protections here. So uh, students are able to receive confidential services that stay, you know, uh, protected within our team, um, even though they might mention, for example, to Ben that they had a meeting with me uh, and Ben very well naturedly might ask me about how the student's doing. Um, we can either confirm or deny that we know who that student is, much less that we're working with them or what we're talking about until we get permission from the student. So um, one of the things I'm really proud about our center is that we are very much involved in the Macaulay community and well-versed in what the experience of a Macaulay student is like and how to help them. And at the same time can offer a safe and confidential space that's accessible um, to students for them to take care of their mental health and wellness in a variety of ways. Um, so 
those ways might look like uh, individual services. That's the, I think what people think of the most when they think of therapy or mental health and wellness. Um, so we do offer individual services to students. Our program is a short term model. So we have the capacity to offer about 15 to 16 sessions uh, to a student. And what that might be different from their experience at their home campus is similar to what Giannina and Ben have said, um, you know, we have a smaller student group that we are supporting. So our staff to student ratio um, as compared to to what they might experience at their home counseling center, home campus counseling center, allows us to see them for a longer period of time. So it's about 15 to 16 sessions, about three to four months. Um, if you're being seen weekly, we also see students uh, bi-weekly. So that of course extends um, their time with us. And one of the other things that is important to know about, you know, kind of our ethos in the center is we want students to feel like this is a purposeful and productive space for them. And that, that gets defined by them, but also we offer goals directed and goal oriented services. So if we say, you know, I want to better manage my anxiety, or I want to reduce my sense of imposter syndrome, or I've just gone through a breakup, and I'm not sure how to process it, all of these things that, you know, students experience at this time in their life, um, we work with them to say, like, you know, what's going on? How would this be better for you? And how do we know that things are getting better? So we are constantly checking in on their goals and making sure that they find that this is a useful space for them, and we can pivot and adapt um, as necessary. So that's the most uh, common way I think students engage with us. Um, and then the other way that we engage with the community is that we collaborate with other departments and other campuses. So for example, we go into the freshman seminars and do workshops around time management, imposter syndrome, stress management. Um, we're going to go see Ben in a couple of weeks out at QC, which I'm really excited about. Um, and then we also uh, do programming here at Macaulay Central. So we collaborate with student development around finals wellness program. Um, and also have collaborated with student clubs who were interested in wellness adjacent topics. And that program is, is accessible to all of the student community. You don't have to make an appointment. You don't have to sign consent forms. We just hold an event or a workshop um, and we want folks to come and find community around um, wellness centered events and get information uh, about it. So kind of the tagline that we have for the wellness center that your students may have heard at orientation is um, we encourage students to make what's called a consultation appointment. That's a first appointment with us. And we say a consultation is not a commitment. Um, we very much welcome that students, if they have questions about anything, they can email us, but also just to have an appointment to find out more about the center, find out um, what supports may be offered to them. Sometimes we have folks come in for an appointment or two and you know they get the answers or the reflections or the insights or the plans that they need and they don't see us beyond that. Um, so we really want folks to, you know, feel like they can come in and have a space and learn about the services and also define, you know, what their mental health and wellness looks like for them, which may not be therapy, um, which is something to consider as well. That's, I would say the third wing of what we do is we do offer referral services. Um, so if a student comes in and they either have concerns that would be better addressed by an expertise in that particular mental health concern, or they would like to seek long-term therapy or feeling you know, it feels weird to get therapy the same place that you're going to school. I totally recognize that as well. Um, we help students get connected in their community or through their insurance. And so we really work to educate them on the ins and outs of mental health care and the system and how to navigate it and also meet with them in the interim. So instead of just giving them a referral list and saying like, you know, good luck, you're on your own. Um, we remain available to them throughout that process and help them uh, to feel empowered in those appointments and talking to those providers. Um, so the last piece uh, that I would say is, uh, as far as advice, is what to give and tell your students, um, you know, this is a really exciting time and can also be a really scary time. Um, transitioning from high school to college um, can be really difficult in a lot of multitude of ways, academically, socially, um, you know, independent skill living wise, if you have folks who are living on their own for the first time. Um, so I would encourage, um, you know, to send a message of flexibility and self-compassion um, to the students that you have in your life. Um, and that doesn't mean that they have to abandon the practices that have gotten them this far. They are here for a reason. They belong here. Um, but also to be courageous enough to try out new routines, new time management, new approaches to things and have the flexibility of behavior and mind and also in having compassion for themselves that they are likely giving to their peers and to the other loved ones in their life. They are just as deserving of that as they navigate um, what could be a very uh, uncertain and challenging and joyful uh, experience. Um, so to compete with my colleagues, I will say I have the best job at Macaulay. And what I particularly love is that I learn 
from our students. They teach me things, you know, somebody might think of therapists as like a, our therapy as a therapist teaching the client, but I learned so much from our students, from our colleagues, um, from everybody at Macaulay. And I feel so privileged to work here and to give students a really positive entryway into mental health. That's the other thing I think really matters about a college mental health center is that maybe the first and only time that folks get access to mental health care. And we're really committed here at Macaulay to making sure that services are accessible and personalized and really positive so that even if someone only sees us for an appointment or two, um, they know that therapy can be a resource for them later on in their life far beyond their Macaulay experience. So I really enjoy and cherish uh, being a part of that process. So I'll hand it back over to Stephanie. Christina, thank you so much. Um, next up on our roster is Professor Nancy Eng. Uh, she is a Macaulay parent for the class of 2026 with two daughters, I believe, at Hunter College. So Nancy, it's your turn. Thank you. Wow, you guys are hard acts to follow. Um, so I want to take a, a little bit of a different approach and really try to connect with the parents who are sitting out here in the audience. Um, so I thought about what I wanted to talk about today in my four minutes, and I'm starting my timer because I hold students to time. I'm holding myself to time. Um, so maybe I'll just start with why we are here at Macaulay. I have a set of twin girls, and... Um, when we were doing the college hunt, we thought about one not graduating with debt. I have twins, so it's whatever the debt it is times two. So that was a real, that was very real for us. That's practical. That is something that needs to be addressed head on. So cost was definitely a consideration for us, but we were not willing to give up on quality. Um, so having said that, Macaulay seemed to be the natural fit. It was the top three choices uh, for both my children, and we were very, very uh, fortunate to have been offered a seat at Macaulay. Um, so having said that, uh, and now that my kids are both here, I can also say that for both of them, it was a bit of a challenge to adjust to being in a, a huge public space like CUNY. Um, both my girls had been were coming out of a small all-girl parochial school. They were really nervous. They, they were concerned. What if I got lost in the city? Um, what if I can't go home immediately? How will I find you? Uh, so I would say fall was dicey there. Lots of calls home. But they began to find community. And there is something very, very special that brings young people to Macaulay. It, and that is their capacity to be empathetic, to reach out, to offer the gifts that they have. And so by spring, I think my kids are pretty well integrated into this uh, CUNY culture, certainly into Macaulay culture, and they have benefited in leaps and bounds. As a parent, I am um, a supporter. I, I contribute every time there's this the proverbial basket that comes around. I make it my business to put a little something into the basket. Um, I am beyond grateful for the opportunities to network here at Macaulay for external grants and scholarships. And my kids have taken advantage of that. My older twin spent the summer in Taiwan, all expenses paid. Um, she went out for a scholarship. She got incredible support from uh, the scholarships director, making sure she was writing an essay that resonated with the purpose of that scholarship. My younger child spent this summer at Cornell learning about artificial intelligence and computer science. Again, with the help of the scholarships and grants director. And at this point, they're both, they both have internship positions. One's at Sinai, the other one's at Cornell. I cannot be more grateful. And then finally, if I had to talk a little bit about um, advice I would give to new parents, I would say engage, really, really engage, not just with your children, but with the program, with other parents. So both my kids are on the swim team, and I travel with the team, uh, not because I think the kids are going to drown, they've been swimming since they were three, but it was really to get a sense of who the other parents were, who the other swimmers were, and how we can forge a friendship amongst the parents. As a result of that, I think three of the parents and I 
showed up at last year's gala. So I am looking forward to seeing everybody at this year's gala. And I think my time is up. So I'm going to hand it back to our MC. Thank you. Nancy, thank you so much. And also thank you for your support um, as a donor. You know, all of these gifts together make for a great opportunity for all of our students. So we appreciate that so much. And I'm so happy to say that our alumnus, James Ganley from the class of 2012 is here to join us and really talk from his perspective as a former um, Hunter alum. Nice to meet everybody. I'm James Danley, a 2012 alum of Hunter Macaulay, um, and I'm currently on the foundation board of Macaulay. So a little bit about myself, I was an economics and political science major at Hunter. During my time uh, at Macaulay at Hunter, I did numerous internships, met some of the greatest advisors that one can ever, you know, one can ever meet, meet some of the best friends that I will forever have. And as I was going on my journey, I tried to figure out, hey, what, what do I want to do next? And eventually I decided law school. And my advisor said, James, that's great. Um, but with all due respect, as I would say back in the day, you don't write too good. Um, she said, don't write too well. And so she gave me the list of a bunch of professors that I should look out to to help me improve my writing. I ultimately decided definitely going to law school, um, applying pretty heavily on the advisors at Macaulay and CUNY Central as well. And ultimately had, you know, very fortunately sort of my pick of the litter when I came to which law schools to go to and ultimately decided to go to NYU as a member of their, you know, their leadership program in law and business. After law school, I went and practiced for four years as a bond attorney in the capital markets group at Millbank. And then a little over four years ago, I made a career change and I worked and now work at a sports investment bank called Galaxio Sports Partners. And it's a sports investment bank that lends directly um, to professional sports teams. We do buy side and sell side m &A work in the sports space for people that want to buy control of you know, MLB, NBA, NFL, NHL franchises, as well as parts of them. And then we also do valuation work and non-securities advisory work. It's really a dream come true. You would have asked 18-year-old me, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? I, that would have been the answer. Um, and I'm very fortunate that Macaulay, you know, put me on the roadmap to get there. And in fact, I interned at Galatea Sports Partners while in college. So I am forever grateful for the school. And, and that's one of the reasons why I want to stay active and hugely participate with the college. And I am very, very thankful that I get to serve on the foundation board. And for those of you who don't know, the foundation board is really a fundraising vehicle for the college. And I like to say that it focuses on the funds for the funds. You know, what is that? That's the experimental learning, that's the career services, that's the wellness and student clubs and activities. It's the stuff that really sets Macaulay apart from any other college. And, you know, under, you know, under Dean Darabur's leadership, sort of the rededication to uh, the college and just seeing her, you know, run and have so much enthusiasm for the school that matches the enthusiasm of the students, it's been absolutely incredible. Um, and, you know, I am, like I said, forever grateful for the college. I will, you know, continue to stay involved. It has not only given me you know, the career of my dreams. In fact, I met my wife while I was at Macaulay. And so I have a lot to be thankful for here. And just, you know, one more plug for the college and coming up is Giving Tuesday. Um, and I know in sort of Giving Tuesday is the community day where we ask folks to reflect and, you know, to take part of and give back to the college. And, you know, I know I'll be doing so. And I hope some others will join me in doing that. Um, we also have great opportunities, gala every spring that, you know, everyone will be invited to. Um, and it's really just an inspiring event to hear what Macaulay students are up to. And I am forever humbled by what the current students do. And I know one thing, which is if I was applying to get into Macaulay nowadays, I likely would not be accepted considering the students would probably run mental gymnastics around me. Um, 
So I will throw it back to everyone else. Um, but thank you for this opportunity to speak and be well. Thank you so much, James. We uh, really appreciate that. Um, there are a couple of questions. I know one that just came up before we um, show the video again for people who weren't able to hear the sound. Um, how do you encourage students, and maybe this is Nancy as well as um, Shania, how do you encourage students to take advantage of all these possibilities? Certainly for my children, um, I had encouraged them to look at what they were engaged in in high school and see if we can't find that sense of community here at Macaulay. So my kids are swimmers. And that was the first thing they did. They got to Hunter and they went to try out for the swim team. And then from there, they, they kind of made some friends. Um, I would really say not just as a parent, but certainly as an instructor, expand your horizons. Right? Um, if you've never played tennis, go out for a tennis team, try out, um, take some lessons, ballroom dance, here's a new club on campus. It, it's, I think the opportunities are there. And I think that a Macaulay students are really go-getters. You have to put yourself out there. Yeah, I just wanted to echo what Nancy said. I think uh, for me personally, I when I think about getting involved with all these amazing opportunities, I remember that this is like the only time I'm able to access all these incredible resources, like whilst I'm in college. So I think that way, just to encourage your, your um, students and your children to like get involved is to say like, this is like no better opportunity that everyone wants to work to support you. Um, and that's kind of what I remember when I'm like here, because I'm like, I want to make use of all my resources that are available to me. So I hope that helps. I would also just add that, you know, it's kind of a question of putting yourself out there and taking advantage of these opportunities, but also um, just trying to manage your time. One of the things that we do during the uh, orientation weekend that you saw the video of was we also have a community resources day where all of our clubs and all of the opportunities, they're right there and your students can sign up to learn about anything from, you know, the Devani uh, dance troupe that's kind of a uh, Bollywood and hip hop dance troupe to a chess club to, you know, the Macaulay Business Club. There are just so many opportunities for you to try something new or to, as Nancy said, take something that you already do and find your community here. Um, so there are a couple of questions. Um, ben, you might be able to tell a uh, parent wants to know you know, when that first meeting comes with an advisor and whether they should contact the advisor or the advisor will contact them. Your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Very good question. So I unfortunately cannot speak to the specific advising thing at Baruch um, of specific advisors or who that student sees. Um, I know that I have been working with my advisees since actually a pre-orientation in the late spring of last year. Um, and I've met with them a few times. Uh, I'm talking just about the class of 27 now, the first year students. Um, within the next several weeks, we will be doing a coordinated effort to get them registered for their spring 24 classes. If you could believe that, it's almost registration time for next spring. Um, and as Stephanie said, yes, absolutely. I think a uh, student should reach out to their advisor, uh, either per in person at the office, um, which uh, students should know where that is at this point, but you know, hopefully they do. Again, I can't speak to what's going on at Baruch, but um, certainly via email and um, rest assured they will they will be advised. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, I see that there are no more questions or they've been answered. So believe it or not, we are so on time that we have a whole 10 minutes um, left. First, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for joining us tonight. And I'd also like to thank our panelists, Nancy Eng, Benjamin Ross, Shania Prasad, James Ganley, Christina Gowan Laura, Giannina Chrisman and my colleagues, Brianne Donnelly and Charmaine Lidlow. 
we so appreciate you and appreciate you coming out tonight. And we look forward to hearing from you. Please keep in touch. Thank you.